Well, despite cement manufacturers recording billions of profits in the first quarter due to sales volume and price hike, affordability of the commodity remains challenging, having risen from 2,600 last November to about 4,000 per 50 kg bag in many parts of the country. Let's look at this sector with analysts at um, Chapel Hill, Dana, Mustafa Wahab. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wahab, for joining us on the program. Good morning. Uh, good morning, So one could say that recovery in cement consumption post-COVID has been impressive. What's your assessment of the uh, cement market in the first quarter of this year? Um, thank you very much again. Uh, so, uh, recall, like you mentioned clearly, 2020 was quite challenging for cement producers, right? Uh, we entered, you know, COVID period in Q2, and the impact of that, you know, affected a lot of the economic activities, which, you know, cement um, producers essentially suffered from. Uh, but the good thing for the cement industry is that the industry actually quickly bounced back in Q2, uh, in Q3 and Q4. But Q1 growth was actually quite solid, you know, better than what we've seen in the last three quarters. And that's basically because of the fact that, you know, the growth that we saw in Q3 2020 and Q4 2020 was basically driven by private sector-led, you know. You know, those periods were essentially periods where um, interest rate environment was quite low. So the impact of this, you know, um, induced a lot of private guys to start, you know, taking loans, you know, from uh, from different institutions to push towards you know, real estate investment, and that's where you know the cement uh, producers benefited from, right? But for Q1 uh, 2021, I think what uh, basically supported that massive growth was the fact that beyond that strong uh, private sector demand, we also saw you know revenue uh, picture for FGN, you know, uh, being a lot stronger, you know, compared to what we saw last year. You know, we are now entering a period where you know, crude oil price is now more or less flirting with that $70 per barrel level. So the impact of that, you know, is essentially um, driving, you know, stronger revenue generation for FGN and obviously uh, KPEX implementation for FGN. So the impact of this essentially supported, you know, uh, cement demand also for public sector um, um, side. So the impact of this generally is why, you know, we saw that strong performance for, uh, for the industry in Kenya. All right, Mustafa, what, what do you imagine is the next uh, growth phase for the cement uh, sector in Nigeria? Um, so, for one, really, I think um, domestically, um, there is um, strong demand potential, right? I mean, we know the story. In fact, otherwise, you know, Nigeria is still backward, you know, um, road network in Nigeria is quite, you know, abysmal. I mean, I like that Nigerian government is now sort of embracing cement um, road. You know, housing deficit is also, you know, close to 17 million housing units. So these are massive cement consuming projects, right? So uh, we think that, you know, um, there, is this, there is this massive, you know, structural cement demand opportunity as far as the domestic market is concerned. Uh, but beyond Nigeria, export-wise, we also see, you know, fantastic solid market opportunity uh, for domestic players in Nigeria. So currently, what we notice is that most West and Central African countries import bag, bulk, and intermediate cement uh, products from Asia. And that's basically because of the insufficient availability of limestone. Um, limestone. So in Nigeria, we have abundance of limestone that is close to export facilities. And this will pretend uh, a huge market for Dantem or, or Bua or, or Lap or Lap, uh, Lafayette to sell. Uh, so against this backdrop, what we think is that beyond uh, the structural demand opportunity in Nigeria, we also think that export is the next uh, growth uh, impetus for the industry. So Nigerian builders have uh, complained vigorously about high cost of cement prices. What would you say is the cause and how do you see prices shaping up going forward? Um, uh, I mean, I think the best way to answer this question is to put things in proper context. I mean, I noticed how you mentioned that cement today uh, goes for roughly 4,000 half per, per 50 kg bag, right? When we first both Danksem and, and Boas numbers at Q1, uh, we did uh, one analysis. Uh, we did, we, we tried to check um, revenue patterns for um, these two key players, right? And for downtown, the is roughly around 48,000. And that roughly translates to 
uh, around 2,400 um, naira per bag for ex factory price. You know, when you now compare that, uh, what that means is that for you to get cement directly for Dancem, you'll be paying roughly around 2,400. But if you compare that um, to what, what you see in the market today of around 4,000, that's close to 60 percent, you know, markup. So now you just, uh, I just painted the picture that is now clear that you know, uh, really the producers are not to blame for this aggressive, you know, cement demand that we're seeing in the market today, right? Now, so this is not to essentially put the entire blame on, you know, perhaps the distributor, right? And that's basically because of the fact that we are in, in an environment or in a community where, you know, um, infrastructure-wise, and where is very poor, you know, road network is quite poor. You know, so all of this is, you know, essentially putting a lot of pressure on distribution costs. Hence, the reason why you're seeing that aggressive markup. Beyond that, diesel price compared to the last few years, a lot higher. So, uh, I mean, we're also operating an environment where inflation is at double digit level. So, this is more or less the reason why, you know, cement in Nigeria is quite, is quite aggressive, you know. Uh, but really, I understand how, where, you know, the builders are coming from. Uh, you know, I see Dancem and Boa. Uh, as well as actually coming from the distribution side of things. And um, so what I think really is that, you know, perhaps once again start to, you know, think about the you know, solving this sort of infrastructure, ch infrastructure challenges, we we'll probably start to see some sort of moderation in cement prices. But going forward, I mean, as far as uh, uh, our engagement with management is concerned, what, we, what they uh, make uh, clear to us is that, you know, prices are going to remain stable, you know, between now and the next, you know, few years. That's despite the fact that they're now witnessing some sort of aggressive, you know, input costs challenges um so we don't expect to see any any um material move as far as you know um expert factory price, price is concerned all right let's uh, look at fx issues now how has the naira devaluation affected um energy costs for the sector players um uh, so i mean uh so i'd like to mention first that close to 40 percent of um input cost of players is actually directly from from energy costs Right, and usually when you see you know material devaluation of the naira, energy costs you know will typically go a lot higher. So that that is essentially what, what would induce producers to start raising prices. But what we've seen so far is that they only raise price you know just uh, a little below you know six percent on average, despite the fact that when an environment where naira is devalued by close to uh, you know twenty five to thirty percent, right? Um, so. Uh, for Nigerian uh, producers, what we've seen, I mean, what they've done so far is that they've invested heavily in some of the most efficient cement, you know, plants in across, you know, SSA. That's why they are able to manage, you know, uh, gross margin, uh, margin, and the impact of that is not, you know, putting a lot of pressure on on, on price. Um, uh, we've seen Bua, for instance, um, uh, say that they are building. Um, an LPG plant in their northern, northern plants, just basically to supply you know, energy to that sort of plant. Dancem has also invested heavily on you know um, maintaining some sort of nice energy mix. Right, Wapo is also building some sort of captive power plant in, in Ashaka. So um, this is why they've been able to manage um, uh, this um, significant naira devaluation on energy costs, you know, uh, effectively. Now, Dangote Cement has um, uh, announced uh, some kind of new share buyback. Uh, do you think that will be successful, and um, how will the market react to it? Uh, I think the, the quick answer to that is that the market will probably react uh, positive. If I take you back quickly, right, in December, Dangote announced that they are going to be buying up to 10% of their share, you know, back from investors, right? And so what they did is that they did way below 1%, but they eventually did it, right? I think they bought roughly... 40 million units of their um, shares, shares are, are outstanding, right? So now they are now seeking another regulatory you know, approval, you know, to sort of continue that, that sort of scheme. Whether or not it's going to be successful, you know, depends on, you know, the cash position of Dancem. And the last time we checked, you know, free cash flow for Dancem is actually roughly around 150, you know, billion naira. You know, beyond that, Dancem is also, you know, now um, they've announced to the market that they are seeking to raise close to 300 billion you know, um, Naira in, in another corporate bond, which is obviously going to be the largest, you know, uh, Naira bond that has been issued in the history of Nigeria, right? So the impact of this is obviously going to support, you know, cash from and perhaps, you know, induce them to actually go through with the, with the buyback program. 
All right, we can, we can rightly say that Nigeria has gone from net importer to exporter of cement. Uh, what opportunity would you say uh, this uh, offers for AFTA? Um, so, yes, I mean, by the time Nigeria signs, you know, uh, I mean, once, once the AFTA program um, uh, starts, starts to, to kick off, I mean, the, the, the truth is that that's all, that would open um, the opportunity for Nigerian producers to start exporting cement. Uh, so, I put, just so I put it in a better context, right, the stock capacity in total in Nigeria today is roughly around 50 million metric tons, and demand in Nigeria is um, something close to around 21 million metric tons. So, that's that's going to be roughly around you know, 29 million metric tons of, of, of used you know, capacity, right? So, if you know, Nigeria could go ahead with the after, you know, that would just sort of open the opportunity for you know, domestic players to start you know, exporting cement towards um, neighboring West African, Central African, you know, countries. You know, like I said, you know, all these, you know, um, um, neighboring countries, they rely, you know, heavily on Asia to import limestone or, 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 or um, um, uh, bulk and bag cement. But um, I think they can do it a lot cheaper if they can, if they can start buying from, from Nigerian producers. Yeah, so... Tell me, which of the domestic cement uh, players would you advise investors to focus on? Um, so, yeah, uh, Nigerian producers are actually one of the most profitable you know, cement players across SSA, and that's basically because of the fact that you know they invested heavily, you know, in you know one of the most efficient you know cement plants. Hence, the reason why they are seeing you know this aggressive growth margin and obviously a big down margin, right? Dangote, you know, is the leader in the market, obviously, both by stock capacity and by volume. And obviously, Dancen is also the market leader as far as, you know, cost is concerned. So I think that Dancen is in a very good position, you know, to, you know, compete favorably, whether from cost point of view or from price point of view. They are also in a great position, you know, to you know, tap into some of the most, uh, biggest opportunities uh, that I just highlighted earlier as far as, you know, cement demand is concerned. Uh, beyond that, same, I mean, I also like WAPO a lot. Uh, WAPO has, you know, um, gone through a nice journey. The company actually sold their South African business, which has been margin diluted, and they used the proceeds of that company to, you know, um, fund or, or, or refinance their, their debt position. You know, WAPO's debt is now down to less than, you know, 50 billion, from roughly 200 billion in 2018. So the impact of this is actually you know, supporting finance charges and obviously EPS growth, right? So, I mean, I favor these two companies. Uh, Boa is also a fantastic company, really. And the company has gone through a nice journey, you know, um, um, investing aggressively in new cement plants, one of the most efficient plants in the company. And, I mean, we also, you know, are looking, you know, towards, you know, those sort of shares, you know, closely in us in Chapel Hill. Uh, in other words, there's still lots of opportunities in this um, uh, three big players in the market. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mustafa, for sharing your thoughts. All right, thank you for your time, Mustafa.